Welcome to ACCA Financial Management or the FM paper. So in this video, I'm gonna talk to you through of how you can pass the FM paper easily. Now, first of all, the syllabus of the FM. As we can say, the syllabus of the FM has been divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven syllabus areas. First of all then, it's all about investment appraisal. It means that we're going to spend the money out. Okay, it's to spend the money out in buying the property, plant equipment, or pp and if you like. So for example, we spend the money out to acquire a piece of building. Whether or not it's worthwhile of doing that. Of course, we will see quite a lot of investment appraisal technique, okay? associated with the investment appraisal area here. So the technique, mainly we are focusing on the time value of money concept based technique. So for example, we will be using things like the NPV as well as IRR or net present value or internal rate of returns to appraise a particular project. So for example, if a company decides to invest, invest $1 million in buying a building, and from the NPV analysis, after buying this building, the NPV is a positive figure of $3 million. So it means that after the project has been started and finished, the shareholders' wealth or cash will increase by $3 million. So we will be standing from the financial manager's point of view and to advise the board whether or not to proceed with potential investment decisions. And of course, we need to understand the interrelationship between the investment appraisal and the business finance. This is particularly important because if you were to spend your money out, where does your money come from? Okay, So where does your money come from? And this is what I mean by business finance. So business finance can either be from the debt finance, which means we borrow some money from others, or from the equity finance. So in other words, we're going to be issuing some shares. And of course, there will be other sources of finance that you need to learn. For example, the latest development in the Islamic finance, because according to Syria, in Islamic finance, the interest is not allowed, okay, so which means the interest, according to Sharia, is called riba. okay. So there'll be other sources of finance as well, so for example, the financing options for the SMEs or small and medium uh, sized entities, uh, which will be the entities uh, that are not listed companies. So for example, we will be using the P2P funding, crowdfunding, supply chain finance, and so on. And it's also very important to understand that if I were to have the money in place, and therefore this will increase the level of dividends to be paid to our shareholders as well. And of course, on the left hand side, we also have got the working capital management. So what do I mean by working capital? As something to do with the inventories, receivables, and payables in cash. So what do I mean by working capital is just to be the money that we tied up in our trading cycle. Okay? It's all about those current assets as well as the current liabilities. It's the money that we invested in the current asset and the money within the current liability. Okay? It's the money tied up in a trading cycle. However, for investment appraisal, it's the money that we tied up in the non-current asset. So how we manage both, of course, we've got different models to manage this part, each part. And we also need to know about the financial management environment, because by simply looking at the business itself, it doesn't really help at all. So for example, what if the central bank in your country decides to push up the interest rate? And of course, it will increase the interest expense if you were to take on additional debt. And this is why you have to take into account of those factors. You need to know who sets the interest rate 
and what sort of monetary policies are and physical policies are adopted by government and the impact on the organization as well. It's important in this, in this paper that we also need to look at the business valuation as well. And particularly, when we are valuing a business, we're going to be valuing the business asset, for example, financial asset related to the money that we tied up in buying shares in another business. Alternatively, it's the money we tied up in buying debt. Okay, so we're going to be put a value on those. And also we're going to be valuing the liability okay, that we have, and asset minus liability, and that being the case, we've got equity here. Now of course, in the FM paper for the business valuation, particularly, we're going to be using the asset-based valuation method. So for example, we simply take a look at the target company's statement of financial position and see its equity figure. So we can use that equity figure as the basis to determine that corporate value. Alternatively, we can use the cash flows base method. So for example, we will be using or estimating the future dividend that the business is going to pay to its shareholders to put a value onto the company. But a more advanced approach or a simple approach would be to focus on the PL by using the price earnings ratio or PE ratio. I will teach you how in a second in our course. And of course, one of the areas that will certainly come up in the business valuation is the EMH, okay? It's the efficient market hypothesis concept. So this means that we can divide the market into the market with no efficiency or with efficiency. And within that efficient market, there will be three levels that we need to consider when we are putting up a value onto the business later on. And then we'll be focusing on the risk management. And in this exam, you will certainly get an exam question related to the foreign exchange rate risk management. So for example, how we're going to manage the future changes in foreign exchange rate. For example, using the forward market hedge or the money market hedge. So these type of question will certainly come up in the FM exam. Of course, you also need to know about the techniques that you can use to hedge against the changes in interest rate, or we can call it as the interest rate risk management. And we'll be using particularly the internal technique in our course, plus a little bit of external technique. So for example, using the interest rate options, or perhaps the collar hedge. Uh, but these two, or these external techniques, we mainly uh, be tested in the multiple choice questions, for example, the section A as well as the section B exam uh, of, your, of your exam. Finally, we also need to know about the central area, which means the financial management function. So in other words, when we are managing our finance nowadays by large businesses, the large business may centralize the financial management function by setting up the SSC or share service center Alternatively, some businesses may decentralize the financial management function or the finance department in each of the subsidiaries in a group. And there would be associated advantages and disadvantages among those. And of course, in a financial management function, we also need to talk about the concept of shareholders wealth. The shareholders wealth concept does not equal the concept of profit, okay? Because profit can be manipulated it's more of a short-term measure, but shareholders' wealth, we will use a very unique calculation to show this. For example, the uh, dividend yield plus the capital gain. So this means that it will be the total shareholder return, uh, if you like. And we will show you how in a second. So this is how the syllabus is structured. But how can we pass this paper then? First of all, we need to know the exam is three hours. Okay, so in other words, you've got 180 minutes 
to tackle these 100 marks of the exam. And the passing mark will be 50. And the exam will be divided into section A with 15 multiple choice questions, each with two marks. And these multiple choice questions will come from any areas in your syllabus. Section B though, we've got another 15 multiple choice questions. However, those 15 multiple choice questions will be divided into three cases. So each case will be with five multiple choice questions. As you can see, a total number of marks will be 60 for the combination of section A as well as section B. I must say that in the section B, the examiner has his own preference to test what areas to be the section B questions. The questions may come from the working capital, so for example, inventory management, cash management, payables management, and even receivables management. So in each and every exam, uh, it will be quite consistent. So for example, in the last sitting, assuming receivables management has been tested, in this exam, it is highly unlikely the receivables management will come up again. And also business finance, where does your money come from? That's a section B question. The business valuation question in section B is one, okay, setting up a small case. Uh, that small case, we develop five questions in there. But please do remember that each question will be independent, okay? You don't really have to get the first question right before you deal with the second question. And also the risk management, particularly with the foreign exchange rate risk management may be tested in the section B. Now, after we've seen all those 30 multiple choice questions, we now come to the section C of our exam. The section C of our exam will be 40 marks with two narrative questions. So which means you are given two narrative questions with multiple requirements there, and each question will be worth at 20 marks. So two questions there will be total at 40 marks here. Now, the examiner has his own preference as well for section C by testing you, again, the working capital management, okay, so for example, over trading uh, issues, uh, inventory, receivables, payables, and cash management, and so on. And of course, the examiner may mix other requirements, okay, uh, for example, from the section A, uh, how to, uh, for example, the advantages and disadvantages of centralizing the financial management function and so on. Investment appraisal, particularly with the MPV analysis, with its application, may be tested again and again in section C. Or perhaps the business finance asking you to calculate, for example, the cost of equity, weighted average cost of capital, and so on. I must say that Section B will be relatively straightforward, and that's absolutely fine there. Section A will be the most difficult section because you don't know what question may come up in the exam. However, for Section C, it's the easiest part in your FM exam. And make sure that you practice enough past exam questions for Section C especially, so you will get a very similar question in the section C. And of course, in our course, uh, I will be summarizing the section C questions and to develop my own answer so you can directly learn those pre-learned answer to be applied in your actual exam. So uh, a very important top tip for you is that don't miss any questions at all in the FM exam. If you don't know about the answer for the multiple choice questions, just to randomly pick up an answer, so for example, answer C, for example. Um, luckily, you will get marks, okay? It's better than doing nothing. So that's the top tip for the FM, and I look forward to seeing you then in my course, and happy studying. Good luck with your study. Bye-bye. APC Accounting for your future